The Girl Who Lived Under the Sea Long, long ago, when the world had just been made and humans understood the language of animals, there were no fish or creatures in the sea. A young woman called Sedna lived with her five brothers in the vast icy wastelands of the Arctic. During the summer months, they lived in a tent and hunted caribou and fox. When winter came, they built an igloo from blocks of snow and huddled inside eating dried meat from their store. When the meat ran out, they went hungry. Sedna was very beautiful. She had long black plates, rosy cheeks, and shining black eyes. Many young men wanted to marry her, but Sedna was proud, and she turned them all down. Now the raven was king of the birds, and he wanted a wife, and his beady eyes fell upon Sedna. She won't marry a human, he croaked, but she will marry me. Raven fluttered his wings, muttered a spell, stamped his claws, and danced around in a circle. His beaks and feathers disappeared, and there stood a handsome man with raven black hair. He put on a pair of reindeer skin boots and a parka of white wolverine fur. Then he looked at his reflection in the sea. Very tasty, he preened, except for the eyes. They still looked like a bird's eyes, so he found a little bone and carved a pair of snow goggles with a tiny slit for each eye to peer out of. Now she will never know, he squawked. Then he climbed into this canoe and paddled across the bay. Sedna was cutting up meat with her silver crescent-shaped knife. She heard the splash of the paddle in the water, but carried on working. Raven got out of the canoe and stood on the edge of the shore. He put one hand on his hip and tapped the ground with his foot. He gave a long, slow whistle. Sedna looked up and saw a splendid man in fine reindeer skin boots and a wolverine parka. Hello there, Raven crooned. I'm the king. He ruffled his hair. Are you in love with me yet? Sedna put down her knife and got up. She did not say hello to Raven or goodbye to her brothers. She just climbed onto the canoe and Raven paddled away. Raven charmed her and flattered her. Raven paddled across the bay, and by the time he reached the other side, Sedna was in love. She was so in love. She didn't notice Raven unfurl two black wings, lift her high in the air, and drop her into a nest. She was so in love. She thought she, the nest was a castle with many rooms. She didn't even feel the wind or the salt stinging spray of the sea. She was so in love. She thought the raw meat Raven gave her to eat was roasted. This went on until one very windy day. A gust of wind blew so hard that it blew Raven's goggles right off. Sedna saw his beady bird's eyes. Suddenly the spell was broken and Sedna's eyes were open. She saw that she was sitting in a nest at the top of a cliff and that her husband had claws, wings, and a beak. Help! she cried. I married a bird. Help, brothers. I married a bird. Call! cried Raven and flew off to fetch some food to stop her crying. Sedna shouted louder and louder, and her cries carried across the water. Her brothers heard her and jumped into a boat. They paddled across the bay, following their sister's cries, till they saw Sedna perched in a nest on the top of a cliff. I married a bird, she sobbed. Her eldest brother scrambled up the cliff, lifted Sedna into his arms, and helped her down into the boat. We must get away from here quickly, he urged. If Raven returned, we'll all be dead. The brother, brothers paddled as fast as they could, speeding through the sea. Suddenly, a dark shadow fell upon the boat, and they heard the whirring of wings. Raven had returned. When he saw his wife being stolen away, Caw, caw, he croaked. Give me back my bride. Raven had to beat his wings faster and faster and faster. He beat the wind into a storm. The wind sat, wailed and whistled. He whipped the sea up into a foam until waves crashed against the side of the boat. 
The brothers were terrified. We must give Sedna back to Raven, they cried, or we'll all be killed in the storm. The wind howled and the waves lashed the boat. Here, bird, take her, shouted the brothers, and they threw Sedna over the side of the boat into the sea. Sedna sank down under the waves. She could see the bottom of the boat and swam out and clung on to the side with her hands. But her brothers were afraid. They did not want to die, so they lifted their paddles out of the sea and brought them down. Smack! on Sedna's five fingers. Her hands were so cold that her fingertips snapped off like icicles and tumbled into the sea. As he touched the water, the fingertips turned into fishes and swam away. Sedna sank down into the icy green water. Then up she rose and clung on to the side of the boat with her knuckles. Her brothers brought their paddles down. Smack! Her knuckles snapped off tumbled into the sea and turned into seals and swam away. <clears throat> Sedna sank down. Then up she rose and clung on to the side of the boat with the stumps of her fingers. Her brothers brought their paddles down. Smack! The stumps snapped off, tumbled into the sea and turned into walruses and swam again. Away. Sedna sank down. Then up she rose and clung on to the side of the boat with her thumbs. Her brothers brought their paddles down. Smack! <laughs> the thumbs snapped off. Tumbled into the sea and turned into two great whales and swam away. Sedna had no fingers left. She could no longer cling on to the boat and sank down under the waves. Raven had lost his bride forever. He stopped flapping his wings and the storm vanished. The brothers were safe at last, but they had lost their sister and they paddled home alone. Sedna sank down and down and down to the bottom of the sea, but the seals and whales caught her and carried her to an underwater cave. And there they made a house for her. Sedna became the mother of the sea, cared for by all the children who had been born from her fingers. From that day onwards, the sea was full of creatures. Sedna did not forget about her brothers, and she sent them some fish to eat. Soon everyone on land was learning how to catch fish through holes in the ice, and how to make net nets and harpoons. Now, even during the hard winter months, the people never went hungry. The mother of the sea basked in her cave, and her hair grew longer and longer and longer, until it was tangled with shells and seaweed, and knotted with barnacles and fishing nets. Sedna's hair was terribly uncomfortable. The shells scratched and the nets pulled, but Sedna could not comb out the tangles or plait her hair because she did not have any fingers. She was so irritated that she thrashed thrashed around at the bottom of the sea and huge waves splashed on the shore. The sea was very rough. No one could go fishing. Their nets were torn to shreds and they couldn't catch anything. Soon the people were hungry again. In the end, Sedna's eldest brother said, Something is the matter with Sedna. I will go down to the bottom of the ocean and see if she is all right. He took a canoe and paddled far out to the center of the sea. A whirlpool came and carried him down under the waves, down to Sedna's cave. Inside the cave, Sedna was sitting with her hair spread out around her like a forest. Beside her was a rock pool teeming with fish and seals, horses and whales. The eldest brother had never seen so many sea creatures. He bowed to Sedna and then took a comb out of his pocket and began to untangle her hair. He combed out all the shells and seaweed, all the barnacles and fishing nets. Then he plaited Sedna's hair into two long thick ropes of braids that curled around the seabed. Sedna sighed with relief and the sea became calm. She was so grateful she sent some fishes, seals and whales for her brothers on the shore. 
Ever since then, the oldest man in the Arctic must visit Sedna once a year. If he forgets, the mother of the sea will create storms and keep all the sea creatures in her rock pool, and the people will go hungry. But so far, he has always remembered to journey to the bottom of the sea to comb and plait Sedna's hair in return for a good catch of fish.